Welcome back to the AR-15 barrel series. Today, we'll be looking at a barrel from Noveski. It's a cold hammer forged chrome line 14 and a half inch Afghan that was loaned to the channel by a subscriber that also paid for the shipping and ammunition costs. So, a huge thank you to him because covering those costs makes us all a lot easier. Anyway, in this video, we will go over the specs, take a closer look at the barrel during an inspection, and then head to the range. All right, we'll start off by going over the specs real quick. The barrel is 14 and a half inches. It's cold hammer forged with a 5.56 NATO chamber, 1 to 7 twist, and it is chrome lined to the same spec as a M249 machine gun, which is about twice as thick as that of an M4 barrel. It also has half by 28 threads, a mid-length gas system, and a phosphate coated exterior. Next up, we'll go over the inspection, starting with the weight. The stripped barrel weighs 1.65 pounds, and if we compare the pounds per inch of barrel length, the Noveski looks to be about a mid-weight barrel compared to the others that I've measured so far. Next, we'll move on to some gauging, starting with the throat erosion gauge. And this barrel measures a one on this gauge. Here is a 5.56 NATO chamber dimensions gauge, and the gauge does not stick inside the chamber, so the barrel passes, meaning that the chamber is at least at minimum size. Next, we'll check the headspace, starting with a Forrester 5.56 NATO minimum headspace gauge. And the bolt spins, so the barrel passes. Next is a 223 no-go gauge, and the bolt spins. So the barrel fails this gauge with this bolt. And moving on to a 223 field gauge. And the bolt does not close on this gauge. So the barrel passes. And this means that the barrel has a headspace somewhere in the middle of the acceptable headspace range for a 5.56 NATO chamber. Here is the gas block journal diameter, which is just barely oversized, which should provide for a good gas seal, but may make gas block installation a bit more difficult with some tight fitting gas blocks. The gas port accepted an 82 thousandths pin gauge, which is on the larger side for a 14.5 inch barrel with mid-length gas compared to the other barrels that I've measured so far. So this might make for a less than desirable shooting experience with certain types of ammo. All right, next up I'll use my Tuslong Borescope to take a peek inside and see how things look. Starting with the chamber, and everything looks good to me. I don't see any significant defects or anything else that would be concerning. Here's a quick spin around the neck of the chamber. And again, everything looks fine. I don't see anything that would give me a concern. Moving up to the throat, there are a few more things to look at here. Although this is a cold hammer forged barrel, the chamber looks to have been cut with a reamer, which is fine. I'm not saying that one is better than the other, but some cold hammer forged barrels, like Geisley and Daniel Defense, have forged chambers. And there are other cold hammer forged barrels that have cut chambers like this Noveski. Anyway, you can see that the throat is a bit uneven. The rifling starts in different spots. Also, I can see some roughness on the right edge of the rifling lands. So, this is not the cleanest reamer cut that I've seen, but pretty typical for a duty or a combat oriented barrel. And here is a side by side with a Geisley barrel. You can see that the Geisley doesn't have the roughness on the rifling lands like the Noveski. Also, the start of the throat is a lot more consistent on the Geisley. Those are pretty typical differences that I've seen between a reamer cut chamber and a cold hammer forged chamber. Moving on to the rifling. You can see some copper fouling from the factory test fire, but the rifling looks to have been well formed, and the chrome looks good. I don't see anything that would give me a concern here. And this is a straight view of the rifling. You'll see some obvious spots of copper fouling, which again is from the factory test fire. This barrel was scoped directly as it came out of the packaging, but you can see these six rifling grooves here, which looks pretty neat. And here's a peek at the gas port, and I don't see any significant burrs. Everything looks as it should. No surprises here. And last, here's a peek at the crown. Most of the crown looks pretty good, but about a quarter of it or so looks a little rough. So we'll see if this ends up playing into the groups at all. Anyway, let's keep things moving. Regarding barrel break-in, Noveski states that they have not found any benefit when using an extended break-in procedure. So other than cleaning, no break-in procedure was performed. Moving on to the shooting setup, the barrel was fitted into an upper receiver from Bad Attitude Department with a BCM MCMR handguard and a BCM bolt carrier group. When assembling the upper, the threads were greased and the barrel nut was torqued to the manufacturer's specification. To increase rifle stability during shooting, the handguard was fitted with a 3 inch front bag rider and the stock was supported by a rear bag. An A5 buffer system was used with an A5 2 buffer and Sprinco green spring. No muzzle device is used to prevent possible interference. The trigger is a Geisley Super Dynamic Enhanced model. The bore was fouled with a few rounds before shooting the first group. Scope is a DNT Optics The One 7-35 by 56. 
The DNT object is mounted in a reptilian mount that was supplied by Danger Space LLC. The mounting clamps were torqued to 45 inch pounds and the rings to 15 inch pounds. Parallax was set appropriately. A Garmin 0C1 Pro chronograph was used to collect velocity data. A Mantis X10 Elite was mounted to the front of the handguard to keep track of rifle stability and detect any possible shooter induced flyers. Groups were measured using the Ballistic X app. Each group is 30 shots. This simulates a match or other practical type scenario where the barrel will get some heat into it and also gives us a decent sample size to work with. Between each group, I used a chamber chiller and leaf blower for cooldown. Distance was 100 yards. Point of aim was a small circle at the bottom of the target. Point of impact was set a few inches higher to reserve the aiming point. Wind was monitored with a ribbon and each 30 shot group took about four minutes to shoot and was edited down to about 25 seconds. Today, I'll be shooting three groups. First will be IMI Razor Core 77 grain. Then Frontier 68 grain BTHPs, and last will be Winchester M193 55 grain FMJ. All right, let's do it. Okay, starting things off with IMI Razor Core. So we'll see how this 1 to 7 twist barrel pairs up with the heavy 77 grain bullet on this load. Anyway, everything went pretty good with this group. Shooting felt fine on my end. Ejection looks surprisingly good for how big the gas port is. However, in my experience, the ejection pattern doesn't always correlate with how well gas the system is. I'd still say the recoil is a bit stout for a 14 and a half inch mid-length barrel, but not as bad as I would have originally thought. Wind was pretty calm, so I don't think we'll have any issues with that. I forgot to turn on the chronograph for the first six shots, so we'll have some missing data there, but I think we'll survive. And the Mantis missed two shots. So we will finish up the group and then take a closer look. Before moving on, I would just like to cut in here and mention that I have several other barrels that I've already inspected and shot, and also a bunch more that I'll be completing over the next couple months. But the reason why you haven't seen videos for these barrels yet is because I don't have the time to run the numbers and do the video editing. So if you're looking for a way to help support the channel, it would be a big help if you could contribute a few dollars per month by becoming a paying member on Patreon or by being a paying member on the channel here on YouTube. The more funding I get from you guys, the more time I can take off work to get more testing, processing, and editing done. To get you guys more data. I'm also working on a website to house all the information that I've been gathering, but of course that'll take some time as well. If you're able to help me out, I would greatly appreciate it. Links are in the description. Thanks. All right, we'll start out by looking at the velocity numbers. All of this info is from the same lot of IMI Razor Core. It was shot on different days with different temperatures and some other differences, but it's the best that I can do. Anyway, average velocity of the IMI Razor Core out of the Unoveski was 2,580 feet per second, which is about 50 feet per second slower than expected. The other 14.5 barrels that I've shot were all in the 2630 feet per second range. But the velocity variation out of the Unoveski looked pretty solid, with a standard deviation of 16 feet per second and an extreme spread of 65 feet per second, which are among the best that I've seen out of this lot of Razor Core. Looking at the individual shot velocities, nothing looks to be out of place. Rifle stability looked fine, with an average score of 99.7, and the least stable shot at 99.1. And looking at the group, shot 27 drifted a little far out to the right, but other than that, we ended up with a pretty nice looking group. Before we go over the group stats, we'll go over my AZ score for those of you who are new here. AZ stands for A Zone Equivalence Distance, and it gives you the maximum distance where the calculated group size would still fit into a USPSA A Zone. The reason why I use this score is because it's easier for me to make sense of the group numbers compared to looking at the raw mean radius numbers. Anyway, moving on to the group numbers, we ended up with a 30 shot group size of 2.389 MOA with a 30 shot mean radius of 0.530 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 266 yards. Or if you want some more familiar numbers to compare to, if we take the 30 shot group and break it down into three 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 1.1 MOA and the average 10 shot group size was 1.6 MOA. Here's a look at the leaderboard with all the other groups I've shot with IMI Razor Core. Keep in mind that not everything was perfectly consistent between these different groups. There may have been some slight variations of things here and there, but I try to make things as consistent as I can, given the time and budget that I have to work with. Anyway, the Noveski Afghan comes in surprising second place, just barely behind the Proof Research Barrel, which is currently in first place, with an AZ score that is only one yard better than the Noveski. So, a pretty solid start. Next up, we'll see what the Noveski can do with the Frontier 68s. Second group is with the Frontier 68 grain BTHPs. I forgot to clear out the memory card on the shooter cam for this group, so the shooter cam ends up shutting off after the ninth shot. My fault, so feel free to harass me in the comments about that one. Anyway, this is Frontier's 223 load of the 68 grain BTHPs. There is also a 556 version. No real surprises with this group. Ejection looked good again. 
recoil felt a bit more harsh than other 14.5 mid barrels. I remembered to turn on the Grano for this group, so we got all of that data. And the Mantis only missed one shot. So we will finish out the group and then take a closer look. Okay, first up we'll look at a velocity comparison of the 68 grain Frontier. There are two different lots on this spreadsheet, so be mindful of that. But anyway, the average velocity of the Frontier 68 grain BTHPs out of the 14.5 Noveski was 2,554 feet per second, which is right there with the rest of the barrels. Velocity standard deviation was 27 feet per second with an ES of 101 feet per second, which is the worst that I've recorded from the Frontier 68s. But there isn't a huge spread from the best to the worst velocity variation from this ammo, as the best SD I've gotten from Frontier is 21 feet per second. Moving on to the individual velocity data, shot 13 was the fastest of the group at 57 feet per second faster than the average velocity, and shot 24 was the slowest. Rifle stability looked okay with an average score of 99.5, and shot 8 being the least stable shot at 98.9, .9, which is just below what I like to see. But that shot didn't stray too far from the group. And looking at the rest of the group, it's a little wider than it is tall, but still looks pretty decent, I suppose. Looking at the group numbers, 30 shot group size ended up at 2.018 MOA, with a 30 shot mean radius of 0.621 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 227 yards. And if we break things down into 10 shot groups, the average 10 shot group size was 1.8 MOA. And I haven't shot too many groups with the Frontier 68s, but here's the leaderboard. The Noveski comes in second place behind the Hodge by a decent amount, and ahead of the two BCM ELWs. Here's a side by side of the Hodge and Noveski groups. You can see that the Hodge put up a pretty solid group with the Frontier. Anyway, let's keep moving on. All right, last group is a reality check with the Winchester M193. I've seen several sub MOA groups with this ammo on the interwebs, but for some reason, my experience has been a little bit different. Anyway, we'll see what the Noveski can do with it. No issues with the shooting on my end with this group. Ejection moved up to about three o'clock. Recoil felt pretty close to the other two groups. Wind was calm. All of the electronics worked for the most part. And yeah, everything went pretty smooth with this group. So we will finish up here and then take a closer look. Alright, so here's a look at the velocity comparison. All of this information is from the same lot of Winchester M193, and the Noveski had an average velocity of 2,964 feet per second, which again is a bit slower than expected for a 14.5 inch barrel. Velocity variation was slightly better than average for Winchester M193, with an SD of 24 and an ES of 104. Looking at the individual shot data, shot 19 was the fastest, and shot 6 was the slowest, Rifle stability looked fine, with an average of 99.6, and the least stable shot at 99.2. Looking at the group, there are a couple shots a little bit low, but overall, I'd say that things look pretty well distributed, without anything significantly out of place. Moving on to the group numbers, 30 shot group size ended up at 4.609 MOA, with a 30 shot mean radius of 1.204 MOA, which gives us an AZ score of 117 yards. And if we break things down into 10 shot groups, the best 10 shot group was 2.7 MOA, with an average 10 shot group size of 3.8 MOA. And moving on to the leaderboard for Winchester M193, the Noveski ends up in 9th place out of 14 groups with this ammo. So not the best, but not too bad either for this ammo. Alright, so here's a look at the overall results. Like always, keep in mind that I am not a perfect shooter, so all these groups could probably be at least a little bit better. Also, this is only one example, and different barrels may prefer different types of ammo. Anyway, the best group out of the Noveski was with the IMI Razor Core, with an AZ score of 266 yards, and that was followed by the Frontier 68 grain BTHPs at 227 yards, and Winchester M193 coming in at 117 yards. The IMI group also had the best velocity SD at 16 feet per second, and also the highest muzzle energy at 1,138 foot-pounds. And that will do it for this one. Like, comment, subscribe. And if you were able to help me out on Patreon, I would really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Later.